Okay, welcome. This is the operation, safety, maintenance, troubleshooting, and repair guide for the soil pulverizer as of December 2011 at Factory Farm. Okay, so there's a couple of general comments to make about the equipment that you're being presented with. First of all, this is life-size, real dangerous equipment, and all safety and operation procedures should be followed at all times. Otherwise, you lose, you risk getting injured, hurt, or even killed by these machines. They operate, they operate on 27 to 54 horsepower typically. That is not a plaything, serious equipment. The thing to keep in mind about the present release is that we are now in a beta release stage, meaning about 150 or so hours of field testing that we've put on these machines, but that's not, not enough to actually see all that can go wrong with these machines maybe there are still failure modes we haven't seen and only after thousands and thousands of hours of testing will the machine really stabilize and get ready for general adoption by the rest of the world so right now this is for the developers and makers people who are aware uh, we do not recommend this to be used by people who do, do not have awareness of their body of, of heavy equipment we do not recommend that you use these things alone and you should all, always wear safety equipment such as hard hats, eye protection, ear protection, gloves and things when dealing with this equipment. There's another important point to keep in mind about these machines that, that open source ecology is producing open plans distributed to the whole world so a lot of the machines may be custom. So be careful if you're exposed to one or more of the machines because they may each be slightly different basic operation and safety on a pulverizer. So this is a device that attaches to a tractor like Life Track. You come up here with a front attached plate, grab onto it, and then pin through it to, to have a firm attachment. Then you connect, connect the hoses. There's two hoses from a, from a power, auxiliary power of Life Track. There's a third connection, it's the case drain return. That's a, that's a, pressure that's like a pressure relief on the, the way the hydraulic motor works but this connects back into the power cube so there's three lines coming into into the system and then you turn it on this motor will drive the whole rotor where the rotor pulverizes soil while it pulverizes it throws the soil into the bucket and then it can be loaded into the hopper of the compressed earth brick press the best way that this works I found is that if you actually go backwards as opposed to forwards when you go backwards you're dragging uh, dirt into kicking it back into the into the bucket if you go forward what what tends to happen is that the motion of the tractor forward just doesn't doesn't tend to break up the the soil as well that's just empirical observations but you can you can test this out under various conditions that might work differently okay so this arm here is adjustable for the the length of the rotor as far as how far in front of the bucket it is this adjustment here adjust adjusts the height of the pulverizer up and down to get a deep to adjust the depth of how how deep you're digging and that will depend on the soil condition so you'll see how well it works. Typically I found about like three inches or so of depth below the bottom rim of the bucket works really well. The rotor here consists of 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 tines with bent, bent ends. The way they are here actually we modified these they want to actually be a little sharper and a uh, little tighter angle, not not so far out. This almost drags on the ground. We modified it to be actually a tighter angle, but this this worked really well. There's a cover here on a hinge that prevents the dirt from flying over all over into the operator, and the tines themselves. You can see there's bolts on each of them. They are adjustable. We found that though some of these bolts would come loose every so often so we had to tighten them down we're going to change that in the future versions but basically you can take the whole shaft out by 
removing the bearing here and this bearing here you can remove the whole entire shaft you can put different tines on if you need to as a flexible option it's not much maintenance the once again the power to this is external you just want to make sure that you keep the, the hydraulic outlets clean don't get dirt in them um, the worst thing that can happen to this is perhaps the the motor failing that's easily replaceable and that has should have many many years of lifetime uh, the only maintenance you might need is maybe clean off the tines if you have things wrap up in there like twine or wire just cut that off or it's gonna start start building up and um, if you're if you're doing pulverizing or mixing of, of material that has cement in it make sure that after use after every day or after you know within an hour of, of use you clean it out with a hose or you get a cake of, of cement now the good thing about this for maintenance and repair this motor comes right off by, by the quick connect plate here dismount these two three-quarter inch bolts and this is a motor interface plate so you take off this whole thing and this is a spline motor it comes right out of the shaft you don't have to worry about a keyway and then you can put a new one on readily as far as maintenance over a long time the tines will wear out these are just mild steel uh, after after about 200 hours of operation we we've seen them wearing down slightly i would expect probably after a thousand hours the tips will pretty much totally wear out in which case you might want to weld on new tips or replace the entire tine mechanism so that's the that's the only repair troubleshooting what can go wrong once again the only thing is if you've got hydraulic power hydraulic fluid power going to it there's very little that can go wrong if you you have hydraulic power going and this thing is not spinning then one it's either the motor is broken or the coupler is broken there's a coupler here connecting from the motor to the shaft and there's a shear pin in the coupler so maybe the, the shear pin simply broke uh, those are the two things that that can go wrong what are the safety issues on this well first of all before you <clears throat> while while operating when you take the soil stop the machine after, when you take it upstairs to, to into the loading position into the hopper so that you're not sending flying dirt all over the place it's a best practice that you would actually turn the tractor off if you're going to go out here and work on the pulverizer because what if someone for example accidentally turns the hits the lever and turns on when you're here so turn the tractor off definitely turn the pulverizer off when you're going to work on it when it's attached to the tractor